Well, the internet is quick to label certain skincare products as scams, gimmicks, and a big part of my channel is actually doing the exact same thing, right? Telling you guys what is complete nonsense. As a dermatologist, some things that get labeled by the internet at large as a scam, I actually recommend. That doesn't mean that the way these products are marketing is honest or that it doesn't misrepresent what we actually know about the ingredient or that the marketing is not completely misleading, but rather it means in my experience, the science of a particular ingredient or intervention is misunderstood or miscommunicated. Why is it that skincare products or a given intervention might get labeled as a scam? Based on my personal experience, I have a few thoughts. First of all, over-promising. Claims like, this got rid of my acne overnight, this cleared my skin once and for all. I went to every dermatologist in town, they couldn't do anything for me, but I used this cream and boom, all of life's problems were solved. Second is misunderstood biology. People assuming that if a product doesn't work exactly how it is marketed, well, it must not work at all. Third, unrealistic expectations. Most skincare products, the benefits that they lead to are subtle. You need to keep using the product consistently over time. They don't yield results overnight. When brands get too aggressive with their marketing, when they go all in, it can quickly lead to audience fatigue and retaliation. Before you know, it, you start getting these YouTube video essays on why this product is a scam. And the next thing you know, it has been canceled and people are hating on it, as they say, aggressively. I think overzealous marketing can end up hurting a brand's longevity in the long run. Sure, it may generate a lot of sales in the short term, but over the long run, once people start to come to the realization that this is just overhyped, they're not going to want anything to do with your brand thereafter. And honestly, I don't think many brands even care about that at all. I think the goal in many cases is to make as much money as possible in a short amount of time and then hopefully either sell your brand for a profit or launch some other business venture with the revenue that you generated. But remember, a product can be really overhyped, really annoying in the marketing, but still end up being beneficial. Scam quote unquote number one that I actually recommend is collagen creams. Collagen creams are probably one of the most mocked skincare products. People say they're a scam because well, collagen is too large to actually get into the skin. And yeah, in part, that is true. But here's what collagen creams actually do well. They act as humectants, meaning they bind water in the skin. This improves hydration, skin smoothness, plumpness, and that's backed by clinical studies showing an improved hydration in the skin with use of a collagen cream. So no, they don't rebuild collagen. I don't understand why it was ever assumed that that was their intended purpose. Regardless, collagen creams, sure, they're not intended to replace lost collagen, but they definitely can be very helpful in moisturizing the skin. Not only can they improve skin's appearance, but they can improve skin comfort, reducing dryness, irritation, peeling, sensitivity, and that tightness. So that's not nothing. Scam number two, red and near-infrared light-based devices like the masks, the hair helmets. Red and near-infrared light devices are often dismissed as a scam. They're labeled as overpriced gadgets that likely don't do anything. I understand why, because these are everywhere. There's so many of them and it gets to be a bit much. But truthfully, there's there's real science to support using these. Red and near infrared light work through something known as photobiomodulation. These wavelengths of light penetrate into the skin or down to the level of the hair follicle on the scalp and stimulate mitochondrial activity, basically improving the energy of the cells and also helping to improve blood flow, hence the delivery of nutrients, growth factors to either the skin or the hair follicle. And they also help cut down on inflammation. Clinical trials show an improvement in fine lines, skin texture, as well as collagen density with consistent use. Red and near-infrared wavelengths of light are also evidence-based for improving hair thickness, hair count, and hair density. That being said, at-home devices, they're not intended to yield the same level of results as an in-office procedure, so they're not a substitute for that, but rather more of a supplement or something that could supplement your skincare routine or your hair loss treatment regimen. The results are gradual, they're modest, and importantly, they require consistent ongoing use of 
the device in order to achieve and maintain the results. So I always like to point out that if you don't think you can stick with using one of these devices, don't waste your money on them. But without a doubt, the mask can be helpful for mild acne, inflammatory skin issues, and for rejuvenating the look of aging skin. And the hair regrowth systems can be a game changer, especially when combined with other established hair loss treatments for androgenetic alopecia, especially in the early stages. But if you're expecting a LED mask to give you facelift level results or a red light hair growth device to take you from having a bald head to being Rapunzel, yeah, those are unrealistic expectations. You can expect subtle and gradual improvements over months of consistent use. Okay, let's talk about the other one that I find gets labeled as a scam all the time, which surprises me, but doesn't really surprise me. And that is, we'll just say retinol as a family of ingredients, which includes the cosmetic stuff, as well as the prescription stuff like tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine, and adapalene, which is also over the counter in the United States. I think people get frustrated with these ingredients because they do take time to work, but that's anything with the skin. And they can be very irritating, very drying. And if you don't tolerate them, but everybody is singing the praises of them, well, that can make them even more annoying to you. <laughs> but topical retinoids are among the most studied topical ingredients in dermatology for having a true anti-aging effect, we'll say, or at least improving the appearance of aging skin, improving collagen production, reducing wrinkle depth. And of course, the topical prescription retinoids are also used to treat skin diseases and are go-to established evidence-based treatments for skin diseases like acne, hyperpigmentation, melasma. As far as the prescription stuff, I suspect there might be some level of motivation online as well to demonize them or fear monger them or act like they're a scam because while anyone can sell you any quote unquote miracle cream out there, only a licensed healthcare provider can prescribe a topical retinoid so there is a degree of gatekeeping and who gets to distribute it. Therefore, people can't make money off of it. And contrary to popular belief, physicians do not get paid for prescribing drugs. It actually creates a lot more work for a physician to prescribe a drug than to not prescribe a drug. That additional work is work that they're unlikely to get compensated for. So for every prescription you write, it's like tons of work extra. Documentation, following up, etc., etc. It's much better to not have to prescribe a drug. The cosmetic retinols and retinaldehydes, however, they certainly can be effective as well. And they're available without a prescription. They're cosmetics. They're not meant to treat skin diseases, but they definitely can yield results for an anti-aging effect. But nonetheless, it's still edgy to say that something is a scam and doesn't work. It's attention grabbing, which that is the name of the game on the internet. Attention, attention, attention. Man, people will do anything for attention. including dismissing a perfectly effective topical ingredient. Multiple randomized controlled trials show that retinol improves collagen production, wrinkle depth, pigmentation, skin texture. The problem isn't that retinol doesn't work, it's that people either use it alongside other things that increase its irritation potential, they just end up getting irritation from it, dryness and peeling, or it's just not right for an individual. It's recommended to use retinol consistently, introduce it slowly if you need to, and make sure to use it alongside moisturizing products to cut down on risk of dryness and irritation. I have videos here all about how to do that effectively, so make sure you check those out. But long story short, retinol definitely is not a scam. However, it doesn't yield instant results. It takes time, it takes patience, and yeah, it can be drying and irritating in the beginning. Here's one that gets a lot of hate these days, and I understand why, but it's hard for me to make a video without bringing it up because it's, it's everywhere. And that is good old topical niacinamide. Without a doubt, it is actually one of the more evidence-based cosmetic ingredients we have available available to us. Why does it get so much hate? Well, it's everywhere. That's exactly why people are skeptical, I think. It's been slapped into every single product, in many cases at high percentage strengths, often without explanation. Why is niacinamide in my mascara? Clinical studies show that topical niacinamide can help with discoloration, it can help with improving skin moisturization, it can help with redness, and it can also help with something known as glycation, which leads to skin yellowing. It's also been shown to be helpful for oily skin. Where things go wrong, in my opinion, is the fact that it is in so many products. So people end up using multiple products with that ingredient, stacking it. And it's often included in products at a particularly high percentage, which is likely causing some irritation for people. The studies that we have show that it is effective in percentages ranging from two to 5%. But you'll find 10, 20% niacinamide. And you start to have to ask yourself, is this necessary? Is this too much? Is this now becoming a problem? I think in many cases, it probably is for many people. Hence the hate. And last but not least is 
silicone tape. Man, man, oh man. Okay, this is one that I am tempted to say is a scam, even though I know it's not a scam. The reason is because people are doing all sorts of paper mache on their face with this stuff, claiming that it is a Botox alternative. Okay, okay, yeah. Taping your face is the same as paralyzing facial muscle groups. Uh, okay. Silicone tape is not going to address dynamic wrinkles, which are wrinkles that appear with facial muscle movement. But silicone scar tape has been used in dermatology for decades. It works by creating an occlusive environment that reduces transepidermal water loss and can help normalize collagen signaling within a scar, ultimately improving the final appearance of raised scars. That's key. Not depressed scars, not ice pick scars, box car scars, raised scars. Multiple studies show that silicone scar sheets improve scar thickness, texture, redness, and can even improve symptoms associated with a scar like itch or discomfort. Now for facial use, sure, silicone scar tape can definitely temporarily improve the appearance of wrinkles by improving moisturization in the skin, softening wrinkles and making them less obvious. But it's not a replacement for neuromodulators like Botox. It's not going to halt dynamic wrinkle formation. Aside from maybe helping to train you to relax your face a bit more, I suppose I can see an argument for that. Nonetheless, if you have dynamic wrinkles, taping your face is a lot of work and it might not quite yield the results that people are claiming it does. I've also seen a lot of influencers who make this claim also have other content on their page about all of the cosmetic procedures they've had done. So it's like, is it actually the tape? <laughs> Probably not. But for scars or post-procedural healing, yes, silicone scar tape is a evidence-based go-to recommendation, not a scam. How can you actually spot real scams online versus just people who are annoyed with a product or who wanna sell you something else? Some red flags is something is probably too good to be true are the claims. People insisting that a given product, cream, intervention, whatever, is gonna give instant or permanent results, uh, probably not. Buzzworthy terms like medical grade without any explanation. I hate the fact that medical grade as terminology has become so obscured that we can't even recognize anymore what medical grade actually means. There is a legitimate usage of the word medical grade. There's such a thing though as medical grade silicone. That's a legit thing. That, that is silicone that is safe for medical use as opposed to like machine grade silicone. But a medical grade face wash is not a real thing. It's just marketing. I would say if there is zero discourse with regards to the limitations of a particular product or intervention. That's kind of a red flag as well. Nowadays, people are quick to label any sort of disagreement or reservation, calling out, uh, this could be a side effect, or I don't really think that this group of people should use this. I think it could cause harm. People are quick to label that as hate. I hate the term hate these days, or hater. I think it is overused and intellectually lazy. A lot of times people just slap the label hate on something when they don't agree with it or they don't like it or they don't feel comfortable with it or they don't understand it rather than really taking the time to listen to what the statement is and to engage in some sort of productive discourse they just dismiss everything the individual has to say moving forward they don't want to hear another thing basically if you don't tell people anything and everything they want to hear and you dare to tell them something that might contradict their worldview watch out you are automatically a hater green flags on the other hand are modest claims. Things like gradually over time can improve the appearance of, emphasizing that results take time as opposed to promising quick fixes. And an overall willingness to express who it is that will benefit from the product and who will unlikely benefit. At this stage, if a product sounds boring, subtle, it's not something you hear a lot of people hyping up on social media, that's actually a green flag right there. It, it probably is, is worth paying attention to. All right, guys, so these products they're not scams. They're tools. They work best when you understand their limitations and who they can benefit and who they can't. If you choose to use them, use them consistently with realistic expectations. Ignore unrealistic marketing claims. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!